Thanks for the intro, and hello everyone. My name is Jun Gong. I'm a third year PhD student from X Discovery Lab at Dartmouth College. Today, I'm going to talk about Jado using lateral force feedback for the smartwatch interactions. This work was in collaboration with Da Yuan Huang from National Taiwan University of Science and Technology, Teddy Set from University of Calgary, and all smart summer interns in our lab, and my advisor, Xin Dong Yan. Before I talk about motivation and related work, first of all, I just want to quickly show you what is Jado and how Jado works. So this is Jado, a smartwatch that can provide immersive gaming and video experience. In this Dragon Ball video, when these fireballs are hitting the sea, Jado will create lateral force displacement to simulate the force impacts caused by these fireballs. It can create an illusion that these fireballs are really inside the smartwatch and collide on the watch edge. Just like this. Here's another collision. And another one. We propose to add haptic feedback when the virtual objects on the smartwatch display collide or push on the red edge of the screen so that the user can not only see the collision but also feel the impact at the same location on the edge of the screen. I will talk more details about implementation and applications later in this talk, but before that, let's get back to the motivation. Smartwatch is a great platform to access information, especially when the user is on the go, for example, exercising outdoors. However, the user experience when interacting with media and game is still quite limited due to its small form factor, just like this video showing. In this work, we explore the haptic channel to improve the gaming and video experience on smartwatches. Our work is inspired by many previous works. For example, Edge Wipe can render character-based patterns on the back of the smartwatch using web or tactile feedback. Skin Drag Display uses a moving texture to drag the user's skin to send the messages. Third hand uses a wearable robotic arm that provides five degree of freedom force feedback on the mobile devices to improve the gaming experience. Our previous work, RetroShape, is the most relevant work among the existing research. It simulates the physical impact using shape changing display on the rear surface of a smartwatch. This technique, however, cannot simulate the impacts in the lateral directions, which is what we want to achieve in this following work. So next, I'm going to talk about the prototype of Jado. Actually, it is quite challenging to generate ungrounded force on the smartwatches. Here, we use a pneumatic system only for this concept demonstration. Jado has two primary components. A front end consists of a 3.5-inch TFT display, along with a mechanical-controlled nozzle and a back-end pneumatic system capable of generating lateral force by emitting a jet of air. Our prototype consists of 12 different components, like gears, connectors, rotary arm, and inside the rotary arm, an air tunnel was printed to connect the nozzle to the inlet. So what you are looking at is how these mechanical parts are assembled. We 3D printed the mechanical parts and assembled them. We used two gear motors and two IR encoders to precisely actuate the nozzle in two degrees of freedom, which determines the force location and direction. Here's a video showing how it works. When generating lateral force, four different force properties need to be considered to realistically simulate the impact of a virtual event so first of all, is the location of force. Force feedback should be generated at the location of the virtual event shown on the screen. As you can see in this video, lateral force is generated where the collision happens. And second, direction of force. Aside from the location, the direction of force also matters. The, prototypes, the prototype supports generating force in a specific direction. And third, duration of force. For force duration, 
the longer the impact of the virtual event, such as a soft ball hitting the edge, the longer the force feedback can be provided. And the last one, magnitude of force. Force, force magnitude can be rendered at different levels by controlling the airflow rate so that different levels of a virtual impact can be reflected, such as a collision between a small ball versus a larger one. So next, I'm going to show you three demo videos and three games to showcase the concept of using lateral force feedback to provide a more immersive gaming and video experience. The first one is the Dragon Ball, which I have already shown you at the beginning of this talk. We simulate the impacts when the fireballs are hitting the sea or the mountain. The duration and the strength of the force are rendered differently to reflect collisions in different levels. And the next one is a video clip of a fighting scene. User can feel that impact when the wind turbine falls off. Besides the collision, Jado can also simulate the centrifugal effect when the car drifts. It feels like the smartwatch is being pushed by inertia when the car hits the corner. In this air hockey game, where a puck hits the goal, force feedback can be felt. And in the tower defense game, force magnitude changes based on different ways of the object colliding into the virtual edge. A smaller stone causes a lighter force feedback, while a larger object causes a stronger feedback. In the space shooter game, when using word gun, we provide a continuous force feedback. The force will fade away gradually after the character stops spraying water. When using laser gun, we provide a different type of force which fades immediately. Besides deep demo applications, the main contribution of this work is the just a noticeable difference study we conducted to know the minimum change in the, in the force magnitude that can be detected by the users. For example, if we have two balls in different ways are hitting the edge, we need to generate ladder force in two different levels, which is, detect which is detectable by the user. So we conducted a just a noticeable difference study to measure the discrimination thresholds. The first thing we need to do is to transform the airflow rate to the lateral force to ensure the results we got are independent of the pneumatic system we are using, which means that these results can be also applied to other techniques that can also generate lateral force. Therefore, we conducted, we conducted an experiment to map between the output force and the control voltage of the proportional valve. As shown in this figure, our pneumatic system consists of an air compressor, a proportional valve, and a solenoid valve. We mounted a 3D printed watch on a bearing board carriage. The magnitude of the output force was then measured using a spring scale. We used a high speed camera to feel the movement and recorded corresponding force magnitude. And here is the mapping. The X axis shows the control voltage of the proportional valve and the Y axis shows the corresponding generated forces. After getting the mappings, we conducted a JND study. We recruited 12 participants aged from 20 to 25. We used a two by three within subject factorial design. Given the early nature of this work, we focus on two crucial factors, force direction and smartwatch weight. We tested two force directions, vertical and horizontal. And then we picked three watch weights based on the weight range of current smartwatches. 25 grams, 45 grams, and 65 grams. A JND was fine for each combination of the force direction and the watch weight. We used a one up, two down adaptive staircase method. Due to, the, due to the time limit, I won't be able to discuss too many details. The basic idea is that we will provide three force stimulus in each block. Two of them are references, and the remaining one is the reference force with delta. Participants were required to identify the force with delta. 
if the participants make the correct response two times in a row, the delta will be in decreased. But if the participants make an incorrect response, the delta will increase immediately. Through this standard JND procedure, we will find the discrimination threshold. So here's a video showing how this study was conducted. The hand is shown on your left side. Here, the JND results in each tested condition. No significant effect was found of the force direction and watch weight. From the study results, we can know that if we want to simulate two different virtual impacts, force magnitude difference should be larger than about 0.5 Newton. With the prototype and the study results, we would like to know if the lateral force feedback is valuable. We conducted a preliminary user evaluation to investigate if the proposed lateral force feedback technique can provide a better gaming and video experience than no force feedback. So we recruited eight participants and asked them to experience the three games and videos with and without the lateral force feedback. Overall, this idea is welcomed by the participants. I won't discuss the subjective ratings from the participants, but here are several comments I really want to share with you. One comment is that I feel so engaged and the force feedback made me nervous when watching the movie clips. Another comment saying that I really enjoy feeling the watch being pushed continuously when the fireballs hit the sea. The most exciting comment we received was, I was totally surprised when I felt the collision in the tower defense game. That was the moment that reminded me of the surprise and joy I had when I played my first video game and felt the vibration from the controller. So for the future work, there are still few things we can do. Our current implementation is thick and large. Additionally, the use of pneumatic system limits its practical mobility. We will investigate alternative mechanisms that can generate lateral force. Our current prototype only works for our initial exploration and help us to get subjective feedback from users. In the JND study, we only tested the factors of three watch weights and two force directions for lateral force feedback. Future research will extend our studies to multiple directions and locations simultaneously. It is also quite interesting to combine JADO with other feedback techniques, such as temperature, vibro tactile, or skin drag, to provide more immersive haptic feedback for gaming and video experience on the smartwatches. With that, I want to conclude our work with three take-home messages. We present the concept of, generated, of generating lateral force feedback to enrich gaming and video experience. We investigated the minimum change in the force magnitude that can be detected by the users. A preliminary user study showed that the proposed lateral force feedback is a meaningful addition to smartwatch gaming and video experience. I think this is all I want to share about for today, and I'm more than happy to take any questions. Thank you. Oh, thanks for a nice talk. Uh, I have a one question. Do you have some reason why you choose the smartwatch form factor? So I think the, that kind of lateral feedback would be even more interesting with a regular smartphone or a gamepad device. Uh, I think the reason why we chose the smartwatch is that is that just because this small form factor of the smartwatch makes us feel it is not that possible, also not that interesting to do the gaming and the video on the smartwatches. And, and I think this is why I want to conduct this research, because people think, OK, I, do, I, want, I want to play games, I want to watch videos on the smartwatches. But I want to take advantage of this great location of the smartwatch, because smartwatches are wearing on our, on our wrist. This is a perfect location to pro provide haptic feedbacks. So we use this specific location of the smartwatches and so that we can, we can take advantage of this and to provide more haptic feedbacks and let, out of, let our users to think, OK, it is pretty cool to use smartwatches to play games and watch videos. And I think this is why we chose uh, smartwatches as a platform. Yeah, thank you. So basically, you want to, be, uh, you want to make a smartwatch as a game platform. Uh, I'm not saying that I'm, I'm going to make a smartwatch as a uh, game platform, but I think uh, 
So smartwatch will be a good platform for gaming and video when, when we are on the go. For example, when we are exercising and I just want to take, take, a, take a rest there. And uh, I, I, I'm taking some public transportations. I think it, for this kind of time, smartwatch is, is a pretty, pretty easy to access and, it's, and it is always where we are on our rest. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Hey, Daniel Ashbrook, University of Copenhagen. I'm curious if your participants talked about the feeling of the air on their arms. Uh, great question. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, so in order to do the uh, the JND study and all, and for the second study, the subjective ratings for uh, uh, the second study, and we all blocked uh, the the we, we asked participants to wear the jacket, mm -hmm. and we asked them to wear the gloves. As you can see, maybe I can show you the. Wait a minute. Uh, so here. So we asked them to wear this jacket and asked them to, to wear the gloves and we tried and we block all the airs so we won't let air feelings to, to affect the feelings of the, our participants and participants say, okay, I cannot feel the air in the air. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What, what about just when you try it yourself? How does the air feel? I, I cannot feel, feel air because I use this kind of setup. If you don't use that kind of setup. What? <laughs> if you don't do that. If, uh, you if, if I on, don't do that. Uh, it's pretty strong, I think. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks. I also have a question. Um, can you elaborate a little bit about uh, the time resolu resolution? Like, for example, you had the ball bouncing. Mm -hmm. How fast can you go from one side to the other side of the screen? Oh, uh, it depends on it. This, depend, this depends on our implementation. And we use motors. So the motors we use, I, I don't remember the exact numbers, but I think it is pretty fast, and it, is, it works for our demo applications, but I, we present that number in our paper, just, just refer to our paper. Yeah. Any other questions? Thank you. All right, let's thank our speaker again.